What is up everyone today we have an extremely shocking story. I go by lots of names has escaped execution by using a portal teleporting him to an empty stone world, where he has been hiding for the past 50 days. Police are trying to reopen this portal but this has led to more damage being done. On to the next story. 780 new Minecraft man. Insert evil laugh track. Those silly humans cannot get to me now. And I can be left alone in my own world. I've been living here for the past 50 days or so, and when I first started out, I thought that this would be the end of me. But thanks to my resourcefulness, I was able to live off of the things I found by digging into the stone. But simply surviving wasn't enough. By using only resources found from grinding stone and filtering it into materials, I created this entire base from scratch. I won't be explaining in detail how I got here since there is a part 1. But here is what's going on. A nuclear reactor powering a factory that turns stone into metal, and some machines that turn ingots into different machine parts to manufacture more machines, and a gaming PC that stores all my items for me and is able to automatically craft items. But we weren't stopping there. We left off with big plans for the future. And we were going to start with a mob farm. But I already had a mob farm. A few weeks ago it started out as a small dark hallway. But after a series of mass creeper bombings, this was widened into a whole cave system. There was also the issue of mobs falling into this pit but not dying, and they were extremely loud. This was not good. So I renovated this mob farm by patching up all the craters and putting a spike trap at the end to automatically do assassinations on mobs. But that wasn't enough. It was time for the mob farm v3. Last time, I was showing off the drop of evil, which is a rare drop from wither skeletons. We were going to use this, to buff the mob farm. First I cleared out the old farm and turned it from a rough cave into a rectangular prism. I then renovated the floor into a dirt floor. This will be needed to renovate the dirt floor into a cursed earth floor with the drop of evil. This makes mobs spawn 10 times higher, but the monsters will be 10 times faster and more deadly. And with a farm this big, we were going to need a way to move all the mobs into one spot to kill them. This could be done with a giant grid of conveyor belts. So then I built a giant grid of conveyor belts. These conveyor belts lead to this deadly pit of death spikes of death, which kill mobs almost instantly. But we could improve this further. You may remember the witch water I created from part 1. I poured it on top of the spikes so that all the skeletons that drop into it will be turned into wither skeletons. And wither skeletons mean wither skeleton skulls which mean wither which means nether star which means overpowered items. But when massive amounts of mobs are destroyed, massive amounts of loot will be laying around randomly, eventually leading to catastrophic performance issues. So how do we automatically collect all this loot from these deadly spikes? First I made a vacuum and used it to suck all the XP and stuff laying on the spikes. Then I used cables to suck in all the stuff from the sucker and put it in my storage system. Speaking of which, not only do we have item storage, but I made fluid storage. Now all the XP was stored in the system as liquid experience. There is one problem. We were getting too much XP and the storage will eventually get full. So we would have to find a use for it. And I found a use for it. The aforementioned use is to pour all the XP into this thing and not worry about it ever again. Because there is a new thing to worry about. My mob farm was not very well designed. Some mobs thought that physics was optional, and were glitching through the walls somehow. So for the mobs that did this, I made a second wall for those that went through the first wall, where they meet their demise on this backup spike. I also had to mute mob sounds because listening to this cacophony was making me lose my sanity. But while the first two walls could contain things like wither skeletons, the endermen could simply teleport out. Did I mention that these corrupted endermen were faster than a NASA rocket, and a single hit from them could kill me? So the solution was to not make them mad in the first place, by not looking at them. We have solved cyberbullying. Now that all the problems in the mob farm were dealt with, it was time to return to the factory. 
the nuclear reactor was making way too much energy for the puny cables to handle. So we would need better cables. Luckily, upgraded cables are made from the same materials as upgrade kits, and I already had lots of those materials, which was convenient. But while I was making cables, I felt that something was off about the mob farm, for the 56th time in the past few days. So I went to check on the mass assassination room to see if anything had gone terribly wrong. It was just the usual, except that due to me making the spike trap too small, there were about 20 spiders clogging up the area. So I was going to go down and It was the accident I hoped would never happen. The buffed creepers apparently had superman vision and exploded as soon as I got in their line of sight. This created a giant hole in the trap, and mobs were piling up in the den, with some spilling over the spiky area. There were a bunch of escaped prisoners in the pit, including a bunch of skeleton MLG sniping me. But at this point I was just going to kill them with lava. I made an air vent and snuck through it to see the mob farm. And I started placing gravel to fill up the holes, because there is no way I'm going down near these guys. The creepers responded by exploding even more. I was about to destroy my computer. Wait. Destroy. Creepers. Farm. I was getting an idea. What if we use the creepers to destroy the farm since the farm spawned creepers? A negative and a positive make a negative. And we were going to use this to get rid of all the creepers. So I was taunting the creepers by flying back and forth between them, and baiting them into destroying the farm that spawned them. After putting down most of the mob revolt, I spammed torches everywhere so the creatures would be too scared to become born. In the aftermath, the damages caused by this were estimated to be 36 billion dollars. But progress must go on. It was time for the mob farm v4. Instead of one gold spike, we used four diamond spikes to kill spiders. And I was going to fix all the holes in the farm, and I swore an oath to not go close to the farm when there were creepers inside. While I was replacing the dirt, I found a music disc. Apparently in the chaos, a skeleton had accidentally killed a creeper, which led to the obtaining of the rare music disc. And it was Strad. After a day of rebuilding, I restarted the mob farm with a drop of evil I got from the old farm. And this time, things went way smoother. Now that was dealt with, I returned to upgrading my cables, to the penultimate tier. AKA resonant cables. Of course, the best cable is the cry of blah blah whatever with infinite transfer, but that was overkill. The reason why I need these are so I can transfer energy very quickly, to my new laser setup. Allow me to explain. This current nuclear reactor looks like a Lego toy set when compared to our true destiny. The laser powered fusion reactor. Which is one part of the maxed out industrial turbine thermoelectric boiler thermal evaporation electrolytic separator setup. Capable of making 15,000 times more energy than this measly gray cube. And we would need that much energy for future projects. Here's how the whole thing works. It all begins with a kitchen sink, which has infinite water being poured into a steel tower. We take the cobblestone melters, which make lava, and use the lava to heat the tower. This turns water into brine, and we use another tower to transform brine into lithium. Then we use this blah blah to split lithium into blah and blah blah. These gas thingies are injected into a giant black ball with the big laser gun pointing at it. Once the laser gets charged to this preposterous number, we fire it in the hole to boot up the fusion reaction. But instead of using it to make power, we use it to make heat. This fusion heat goes into a big boiler which is filled with the equivalent of six Olympic-sized pools provided by yet another kitchen sink, and as the name suggests, the boiler uses the heat of the sun to boil water into steam. And finally, the steam turns this giant turbine the size of the Burj Khalifa, producing whatever this number is, in energy units per second. But just like how wires can be upgraded, pipes can also be upgraded. And we were going to need the mother of all pipes to transfer the massive amounts of steam and water around the system. We were going to use the super laminar fluid duct, which has infinite transfer. As for transferring heat, we will use this thingy. As for the rest, normal gas and fluid pipes were good enough. 
And that is basically the whole plan. Anyways, it was time to grind. And there you have it. The industrial turbine set up. Now it was time for the grand opening. This was awkward. It appears that the laser was not powerful enough to begin the fusion reactor. So we would have to wait a few more days for the laser to power up again. This is so sad. So it was time to go for something else. Speaking of something, there is something I have to tell you that is extremely shocking. That thing is, please subscribe. So that I can pass myself and sub count. Anyways back to what we were talking about. There is one thing that has been overshadowed by all the recent improvements in the base. Resource chickens. So far it may seem that these painfully slow chickens could not compare to the sieve factory. But after several tiers of chicken breeding that I did over the past several weeks, but did not mention because it was kinda boring, I finally got the draconium chicken. This is the only method of obtaining draconium, one of the most valuable materials in the game. But it seems that this chicken only makes one draconium per geological eon of the earth. That's because this chicken has low stats. Each chicken has three stats. Gain. Strength. And growth. And breeding two of the same chickens may lead to a mutation in these stats. In a good way. And according to my calculations, we would need around 7 tries of constant breeding to get a decent chicken. If we multiply this with whatever the chicken breeding cooldown is, which is a very long time, we get an extremely long time. So we would have to do something else while waiting for the chickens to do their business. Speaking of breeding, we were going to take it to a new level. Now introducing. The Phytogenic Insulator. A fancy way of saying, a machine that automatically grows crops. As the name implies, it takes water, seeds, and fertilizer to grow stuff. But wait! How do we get fertilizer? The answer is to use the byproducts of ingot smelting, aka slag, to make this green powder. But this is not the fertilizer's final form. By stuffing the green powder into a charger, you get flux phyto grow. One of this can make six of these and maybe some spare seeds. Gone are the days of using bone meal to grow wheat. We were now a wheat powerhouse. And it was time to get back to cow breeding with this newfound wheat. And we were now finally getting towards the final tiers of cow breeding. While the basic cows had a 50-50 chance of breeding successfully, these higher cows, such as platinum, had a 10% chance of making something new. Eventually, I arrived at the last 4 cows I would need. The liquid death cow, which has a 3% chance of being bred, which I got on first try. Next, the stellar cow and evil infused cow, each having a 2% chance of spawning, which didn't matter since we can just throw more wheat at the problem. But I slowly realized that breeding cows out in the open wasn't very efficient. We would need a mass breeding factory for this. 
And after what felt like five quintillion years, I got both cows. Leading up to the final cow. The infinity cow. Which took about a hundred attempts to get. This cow has a milking cool down of four hours, so we would have to place this down as soon as possible. Now that we had infinity ingots and draconium being made, it was time for the next overpowered resource. The nether star. Luckily, the mob farm v4 had not catastrophically exploded yet, allowing us to farm about 30 with our skulls of passive income. And we had soul sand, which was easy to get anyways. But wait a moment. Where do we fight the wither? Fighting it at the base would lead to the destruction of everything of biblical proportions. So I would contain the fight within this witherproof reinforced obsidian box, and kill the wither from a peeking hole. Causing me to obtain the nether star. Now there was one less thing on my to-do list. The next thing is starting the fusion reactor. This time I lit about 1 billion energy flow into the lasers. Twice the first attempt. Now we see if this is enough to begin the reactor. The answer was yes. And as you can see here. The turbine is now running and making extreme amounts of energy. But since we had no way to store this much energy due to the limitations of the energy storage cube, we were just going to leave it here until further notice. And even though this boiler was hotter than the sun, these mobs were happily taking a little swim in conditions similar to the Mariana Trench. Speaking of trench, this video was sponsored by Ratio Discord Bot by Jonah. Anyways, you may remember the end quote unquote dimension from the previous video, which is an infinitely large slab of end stone stacked 500 blocks on top of our base. The thing is, the end was much more than just some end stone. Today, we were back on a more serious mission. Because we were going to summon and fight the mighty ender chicken. Since this map has no actual ender dragon. The boss is an ender dragon chicken that is spawned by building this ritual thing and doing a ritual where you throw an egg into the ritual. The chicken creates a giant explosion when it spawns, similar to the wither, so I was getting out of here. Suddenly, there was a giant cave, and the ender chicken took up most of the new space. This is where this torch launcher comes to play, because fighting is inconvenient when your enemy is in the shadows. But while I was tunneling around, the dragon noticed me and did its special attack. The Ender Chicken Laser. Even though I was in diamond armor, I was nearly obliterated. This was far harder than a normal dragon fight. I then realized something. This boss was far beyond me. I was not ready for anything like this. I had to get out of here if I didn't want the run to end due to the Ender Chicken Laser Breath. So I flew out into the cave and exited the war zone. After that failed fight, I learned my lesson. I would need better equipment than diamond armor. But what could possibly be better than diamond? The answer is draconium. Which I mentioned earlier. But about that. Even after all this chicken breeding and waiting, we still made only 9 Yocto draconium per 5 milliseconds. I did have a spare draconium chicken laying stuff, and from this one guy, I got 2 ingots after waiting about a week. So we were still attempting to breed faster draconium chickens in the roost next door. So I kept waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And then I had enough. We had to do something in the meantime. I took the two first ingots we got and grinded them and covered them in stone to get this info tablet. Which gives more information on items that can be made from draconium. And this includes, the wyvern armor, made from draconium. But this is more than just purple colored armor. Instead of durability, it runs on energy. It comes with its own mini shield. Basically making you immortal until the shield runs out. It is the third most powerful armor in the game. But that's not the only thing to look forward to. Behold. The final boss, aka the Chaos Guardian. Which drops the items needed for the end game. But no spoilers for now. Meanwhile, I noticed that I was running out of space in my storage because of armor spam from the mob farm. While I was throwing them out the window, I noticed that I also had a few hundred loot chests also from the mob farm. What could possibly be in these loot chests? I was curious, and decided to find out. 
After spending five minutes to open a few hundred surprise mechanic boxes, I slowly realized that this was a bad idea. Even the so-called legendary loot chests gave items I didn't use, because I don't know what most of these are. As for the rest, they were still useless anyways. Not to mention, it clogged everything up with unstackable useless items that either did nothing or did useless things or did nothing useless things. So I had enough of these loot chests. It was also getting annoying to have to travel to the gaming PC to get something even though it only took 2 seconds. So it was time for a revolutionary revolution in storage. Wireless storage. By making a security terminal, a wireless connector, and using that to connect this iPad to the system, we could now get whatever we wanted from wherever I was. It was currently day 87, about two and a half weeks since I began breeding draconium stuff. Finally, on this day that will go down in history, I finally obtained a draconium chicken with max stats. But even then, this was too slow. So it was time to use the buff chickens to make even more maxed out chickens. And it also appears that the infinity cow was ready to be milled. So on this day that will also go down in history even though it was the same day, I obtained, the infinity ingots. Now it was time to put them in the storage and forget about them for a few days. With the draconium I currently had, which was around a stack since we already had a few chickens, I created the draconic core. The base of all things related to draconium. But one on its own was useless. We would need, according to multivariable calculus, 25 of them to make our dream armor. But at this point I was making about 1 ingot every 8 seconds from to this union of 16 super buff draconium chickens I breeded, so it was pretty easy now. I then proceeded to murder 5 more withers. If we combine these two items, we get a slightly discolored upgraded draconic core. The wyvern core. The final stepping stone before wyvern equipment. Say hello to infinite durability and invincibility shield. And armor upgrades. Before we get to that though, it was time for the final machines we would need to make in this game. First up, this. A transparent Amazon box with 10 big lasers pointing at it, all powered by my overpowered cables. It will be used to combine approximately 11 items together into approximately 1 item. Next we make the so-called cryo-stabilized flux duct from this current tier of cable I have, but covered in glass and filled with cold stuff. Which will give us infinite energy transfer. And I shall use it to power the fusion square. We will also use it to power the energetic infuser, which will be used to charge up my newly obtained gear. Finally, we would need the empowerer which does the same thing as the fusion square, but less awesome and shaped like a plus sign. After spending a few tens of cores and a few special materials here and there, I got all the aforementioned equipment we would need for slaying the ender chicken. I also made a few upgrade kits for the armor, and sat here for about 15 minutes watching this oddly satisfying upgrade animation. Now that we had decent equipment, it was time to get a rematch with the Ender Chicken. I flew upstairs and went upstairs of the upstairs. And I found the Ender Chicken right where I left it, in the massive cave he created. As expected, the chicken was very infuriated and tried to drill a hole through my body. But it deflected right off my shield. I also brought several bottles with me because we would need to collect the chicken's dragon's breath created by its laser attack. Now that the chicken has served our purpose, it was time to get rid of it. And the result of this fight? A clay loot crate. And the egg and heart of the dragon. Not to mention the dragon's breath. I went back to base and used the dragon's breath, some prismarine, a nether star, black warts, and some shiny rocks to make the philosopher's stone. Possibly the most overpowered item in the game. With this, it was time to put the alchemy in alchemy. Alchemy is the process of turning something into a new thing by using things. With the Philosopher's Stone I could do about 7 different transformations. But these were just cheap tricks. To actually do something cool we would need the Energy Condenser, which can transform anything into anything. And it is made from dark matter and red matter from the Philosopher's Stone. But in order to fuse them into the condenser thing, we would need better injectors. So I made them purple. 
we would also need covalence dust, which would come from using the less cooler fuser and some basic resources. But the last dust we needed came at a cost of dimension shards. This is where the loot chests came in clutch, which was a major plot twist. Because I got dimensional shards from the loot chest. But never again would we open another loot chest. With all the ingredients obtained and injectors that were powerful enough, we obtained the energy condenser. Throughout this entire playthrough you may have noticed that almost every item has an EMC counter. Using the condenser can turn items into whatever EMC they're worth, and the EMC can be used to create a different item you have. And by putting infinity ingots into the condenser, we get 38 billion EMC. With this, we can basically buy anything we want, but only if we get one of that item first. Because you still have to tell the machine what to make. I had some leftover wyvern stuff so I used the EMC to quote unquote, buy, some more cores and some draconium for good measure. It was also very useful for obtaining otherwise extremely rare materials. In the past several days I was lucky enough to breed the final chicken, known as the awakened draconium chicken. Which creates the extremely valuable awakened draconium. Now we just had to wait one day for it to lay something, and we could duplicate it. With these three items I made the energy core, which will take up about 365 pi cubic meters of volume. So I removed the old nuclear reactor to make way for it. The way the energy core works is that you place the core somewhere mid-air and surround it with a massive amount of awakened stuff and normal draconium, and have four stabilizers pointing at it. By activating it, I now had a near-infinite energy storage with the limits being the highest possible 64-bit integer. To transfer energy in and out, I used these pylons, and attached these things to the pylons. These are flux points, which are basically cryo-stabilized flux stuts of wireless. By using them to connect the turbine and the pylon, and disabling the transfer limit, we were now drowning in energy. And this wasn't useless. We would need about 3 trillion energy for something in the near future. For now, it was time to go for a better armor than Wyvern stuff. AKA Juraconic stuff. Which has all the features but done better. Using this armor is basically using Impact Client. But perhaps the highlight of Draconic equipment was the Staff of Power, which can one-shot nearly anything in a 5 block radius and acts as a shovel, pickaxe, and axe that breaks stuff in a 3 block radius instantly. And yes. It's powerful enough to beat the Chaos Guardian. So without further ado, we shall obtain the Draconic Karmer. As the Chaos Chicken died, he left behind the legendary Chaos Shard. These will be needed for the final injector upgrade. The Chaotic Injector. Capable of making the balance clank. So far the turbine had created a total of 7 trillion energy. Which was enough to power the balanced clay experiment. After several minutes of waiting for it to charge, the balanced clay was ours. Now I do admit that this item is useless and is simply for flexing. But it was time for the final item to grind for in this game. The Tome of Knowledge. Creating it will put the factory to the test. To get that, I made the extreme crafting table and neutron collector. We would also need lots of chests so I got rid of the wheat stuff in the farm and replaced it with an automatic tree grower. After a few more steps, I got the transmutation table, which was the easy step. I then used the chest to make several transmutation tables. The reason I did this is that the Tome of Knowledge is useless without a spare transmutation table. Now that was done, it was time for the moderately hard part. Bruh.
Finally, I created the Tome of Knowledge. As the name implies, it gives you knowledge about everything. More specifically, instead of having to obtain an item first before using EMC to make it, by putting the Tome of Knowledge in the spare transmutation table, I could get any item I want. We were basically in creative mode. And yes, this means more balanced claim. But anyways, this means that we have quote unquote, beaten the game. Plus we were at 100 days already. Keep in mind that there are hundreds of different ways to play this. There is no such thing as the most efficient way to play it. I just play it the way I feel like doing. And I was now stuck with the balanced clay, in this stone dimension. But what if? There was something the balanced clay was hiding. Wait a minute. How is that possible? I have returned. Insert evil laugh track.